Stanhope is a quiet town on the border of Sussex and Morris counties in New Jersey. Stanhope was founded in 1904 when it separated from Byram. But well before that, and throughout the 1800s and the early 1900s, Stanhope was an important iron and steel making center. The first anthracite iron furnace in New Jersey was built in Stanhope. Transportation was crucial to Stanhope's growth. First, the Morris and Sussex Turnpike, completed in 1810, linked Stanhope with the rest of New Jersey. Then the Morris Canal, completed in 1831, brought coal from Pennsylvania and shipped Stanhope's iron to New Jersey manufacturing centers in the east, such as Patterson. Finally, the Morris and Essex Railroad, completed in 1853, allowed Stanhope iron products to be shipped all over New Jersey. Today, Stanhope offers an active community, affordable housing, and convenient access to Route 80. Stanhope features a number of scenic bike and walking trails. Many interesting and historic sites are accessible and easily observed along these trails. Let's take a closer look at one of Stanhope's walking and bike trails. This trail runs along the path of the Morris Canal. The Morris Canal, completed in 1831, was an important part of New Jersey's early transportation system. On the eastern shore of Lake Muskenetkong, you can see the top of Lock 1 West. This is how Lock 1 West looked in the early 1900s. You can walk on top of the lock walls towards the lake. Lock 1 West led to a towpath that crossed Lake Muskenetgong toward landing. This lake was created in the 1800s to provide additional water for the canal. You can see the outline of the old towpath from the air and when the lake is partly drained. Cross the road and head towards Stanhope. Be sure to cross at the crosswalk. On the other side of the road, you can see a section of the canal that is still filled with water. Walk along the towpath and over the concrete bridge. This bridge replaced an old wooden bridge. Overflow water from the canal would flow under the bridge to the Muskenetkong River to your left. This small park used to be a large water-filled basin. Canal boats would wait in this basin for the lock behind you or for the canal plane directly ahead. Many of the buildings on your right were canal stores and depots built on the edge of the basin. The Stanhope House on the corner of Main and High Streets was a popular watering hole in the canal days and still is today. It is famous for hosting people like Babe Ruth during Prohibition days. Further along are the remains of an old plaster mill. This section of the canal led to the Stanhope Iron Works. The slip was built specifically for that company in exchange for the land under Lake Muskenetgong. There are several interesting artifacts on this path. The remains of a wooden gate and a functioning waste weir are clearly visible. At the end of the path is a small pond. 
which was used for unloading coal and loading iron from the works. Walk across the post office parking lot and continue west. You are still in the canal basin. If you were standing here 100 years ago, you would see the top of Plain 2 West and you would be wet. Cross Kelly Place and go down Plain Street. At the intersection with New Street, you can see a canal marker and some of the stones that held the inclined plane in place. As you continue down Plain Street, be sure to look for the inclined plane stones on your left. They are partly buried on the side of the road. Proceed to the small concrete bridge over the Musconetcong River. This bridge was built in 1924 when the canal was abandoned to replace a wooden towpath bridge at the same spot. On the other side of the bridge is a rare watered section of the old canal. Walk along that path for a few steps and turn around. This was the view from the same spot 100 years ago. The towpath and canal prism look much the same as it looked when the canal was in operation in the 1800s, with fewer trees, of course. Finally, we come to the remains of Lock 2 West. Some remnants of the lock tender's house stand today and are worth a careful inspection. Much of the canal for a mile or so to the west of this spot has been buried under Route 206 and Route 80. The walking and biking trail continues, however. After a few hundred yards, the path joins a small paved bike trail near the intersection of Continental and International Drives. This trail leads to the Sussex Branch Bike and Walking Trail.